Even in its sporty A-spec trim, the Acura RDX sticks with a 2.0-liter turbo engine, whereas a lot of the more performance compact luxury crossovers are dealing with V6s or inline sixes or something with a little more grunt. Does that help out with real-world highway fuel economy? Let's go find out. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. Today we've got the real world highway fuel economy test on the 2022 Acura RDX. In today's test, we're gonna head out and do 50 miles out and 50 miles back, averaging 70 miles per hour to get you a realistic highway fuel economy number for this compact luxury crossover. Before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. I actually quite like the RDX ever since it got redesigned and really even in its first generation, I think it's a good car. I think the styling is just unique enough to kind of stand out and it helps that Acura gives it some cool paint colors like this one here. Boy, you can see I had to be on some pretty muddy roads the other day. <laughs> really got this dirty, might have to go use our Giraffe Tools power washer back at the garage. But anyway, if you wanna see more on the RDX, check the link in the description. We've got three different sound tests, a members only, a normal one, and a special sponsored one. And of course, we'll have our DM test drive coverage as well. So why do we do this test? Well, the EPA's Highway Fuel Economy test, which gives this RDX 26 miles per gallon, that test only averages 48 miles per hour. And we know there are people who use their cars for long road trips and would like to know what sort of numbers they can realistically expect cruising on the highway. In order to test that, we're gonna go over to the gas station here, fill up, go out and do 100 miles, come back, fill up at the same pump using the same three-click fueling method and get a result. A few things to note for today, outside temperature is currently 53 degrees Fahrenheit, we're going to have a little bit of rain as well. I'm hoping that it won't be a significant amount of rain, won't make for any standing water on the road, but if it does, then we'll try to factor that in at the end of our test. We also have the tire pressure set to their door placard, 36 PSI cold, and we're going to run the climate control at 73 degrees auto. All right, let's hop out and fill it up. One thing I am not a fan of with the RDX is it wants premium fuel, it doesn't, oh yeah, there it is right there. Well, premium recommended, 87 minimum. Hmm, I am gonna keep premium fuel in this, mostly because I'm not the only one driving it and I want people to be able to experience it, including myself when I review it on optimal uh, fuel. But just keep that in mind, I mean, compared to some of the other performance, or not even performance options out there, but other options in this class, you could definitely be filling up on regular gas and saving a good amount of money at the pump. 5.652 gallons going in for our first fill. Before we start the engine, we're going to reset the car's trip computer and our GPS, and we're ready to begin. A few different drive modes here in the RDX. You've got Comfort, Normal, Sport, and Snow. We're gonna run this test in Comfort. We're gonna take it nice and easy over the highway about half a mile away and pick up the test from there. The goal of this test isn't to hypermile. We're not trying to get the best possible fuel economy number, but rather a realistic figure. In order to do that, we're gonna get up to highway speed here at a reasonable pace and set our cruise control at a GPS indicated 72 miles per hour. That should allow us to average 70 over the whole test. 10 speed automatic transmission keeping us in power. Plenty of grunt to get up to speed. Let's see how accurate our speedometer is down here. Oh, it looks like we're just about right on the money. So 72. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Come on, get up to 72. You can do it. There we go. Looks like 72 on the dash is giving us just about 72 on the GPS. Maybe a tad low. So I think 73 on the cruise will be a good figure. You do have adaptive cruise control and a road mitigation assist and it looks like an active lane keeping as well. We'll have to see how well that does over our test. Let's see just initial observation. It does not seem to center us in the lane. It's it's just an assist. It's definitely not a semi-autonomous driving mode. So that's interesting at this price point. Other initial highway observations, it's pretty decently quiet in here. I'm actually going to close this, this the sunroof shade here that should make it a little bit quieter. All right, well, we're gonna continue on with the test. Test out this ELS audio system, do our video on that, and catch up with you at the end. In the meantime, enjoy this time-lapse of the entire trip.
the game. So let's to the end of the highway fuel economy test here in the RDX A spec. It's a good highway cruiser, decently comfortable. The seat actually provides quite a few adjustments. Not only can you do four-way lumbar, but you can also extend the thigh support and the bolsters. I, I quite like that here in this A spec model. So everything is squishy where your elbows need to go. A lot of adjustability in the steering wheel as well. Dual pane glass and overall pretty darn quiet in here. Pretty darn good sound system, of course, the ELS Studio 3D. Not super impressed by the fuel economy, however. We're coming in right on EPA, 26 MPG, according to the car's trip computer. What, what's the point of getting a compact crossover if you're really only getting mid-20s fuel economy? I mean, I know this is a luxury vehicle and stuff, and, and fuel prices may not be quite as important to certain luxury buyers, but... There, there are many larger and nicer vehicles you can get that get better fuel economy than this. And when we're talking about competitors that you can get a two and a half liter or a three liter or a three and a half liter, and yet you're sticking with this two liter turbo and you're only getting 26 MPG on premium fuel, eh, that's, that's not great in my book. But let's get back to the pump here. Let's fill it up, see what the actual pump calculates and crunch some numbers. 4.003 gallons going in for our final fill. 102.2 divided by 4.003 has given us 25.5 miles per gallon, just barely rounding up to 26. So just what the EPA predicted and just what our car's trip readout was as well. It's actually coming at 26.1 there at the end. So I think 26, pretty darn achievable. We do have a 17.1 gallon fuel tank in here, so 17.1 gallons times 26 miles per gallon is giving you an effective highway cruising range, 440 miles here on the highway in the RDX. Now, if you got the non-A-spec model, EPA says you'll probably get an extra mile per gallon. Again, I just, it's not bad. It's, it's certainly not bad. If you have an RDX or if you really like the RDX, it's not a reason not to buy one, or it's, it's not bad, it's just, for me, if I were going to do a lot of highway driving, first of all, I'd just get a sedan, a larger, nice luxury sedan. Second of all, if I had to get a crossover, really wanted one, you get something like the NX350H, which got 31 on the highway. Or no, I think it got even better. I think it got like 34. Yeah, it was 34 on our test. I got 31 to an 80 on the highway. Uh, even the Genesis with the 3.5 liter got 26. And we're, we've actually got the BMW X3 M40i right now this week and that one has an epa of 26 which means i'm sure it'll get 28 to 30 on the highway so it's just a little bit of a bummer that acura couldn't do a little bit more with the fuel economy considering we are working with a smaller motor here but hey if the small motor's got to be in boost for a long uh, a lot of time while it's cruising on the highway then yeah, it's not really uh not really gonna make that much of a difference anyway but thank you all so much for watching hope you enjoyed if you do want to see more on the rdx it's quite a good car so check the links in the description and we'll see you on the next one I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.